Basketball fans, the boys are back on set. Welcome into our first traditional episode of Raptors today, coming to you from the belly of the beast. It is the Scotia Bank Arena. I am Akil Augustine on the far end, Sherm Hamilton. And joining us today, Mr. Eric Smith, East Smitty, fresh out of Montreal. How are you living, buddy? Uh, bonjour, Akil. Okay. Come out to Pell 2. We. All right, with all that being said. I heard said, you weren't working on your French very much no, in Montreal. No, I refuse to. But shout out to all the French Canadians that came out of support in Montreal. But right now, the focus on the Toronto Raptors. Head coach Darko Rakovic talked about the big news, of course, RJ's injury and a lot more. We'll head to him now. Darko, who's left in practice after RJ, you know, suffered the injury with the shoulder? Can you tell us sort of more about sort of his... Uh, RJ, very similar injury to uh, the one that Jacoby had. Uh, it's uh, his uh, right shoulder. Um, we evaluated yesterday. He did MRI. Uh, he's going to miss the rest of the preseason. And uh, we expect him to come. They're going to go week by week. Uh, he will be able to do a lot of other stuff, uh, conditioning-wise, and to address, you know, his health uh, everywhere else uh, with his uh, knees and strength and all of that. So uh, once he comes back, he's going to be in a, in a great position to, to continue. For Friday's game, Scott Barnes is going to play, do you think? Yes, I believe so. Uh, he went through uh, practice as normal. He's ramping up with his work. Yes, we expect that he's going to be playing. What, what, do you, what do you want to see from him during the preseason? Uh, I, I want uh, to see that he's uh, embracing his role, that uh, he's uh, playing for the team, that he's playing the right way and making the right decisions. Uh, I believe that Scotty is the player that's a very unselfish player, team-oriented player, and uh, I want him to continue being that, that he's making the right decisions uh, more time than not. Uh, he also brings a lot of intensity for our defense. Uh, he's a good rim protector as well. And this season for him is going to be one of his goals is going to be improving his defense to elite level to be uh, recognized as defensive player of the year. Darko, there's been. Sorry, Have you seen any difference so far? In him? Do, you, do you find yes. he's quicker? Is he, uh... His body looks amazing. Uh, he's, uh, he's very explosive. Uh, he worked a lot, a lot this summer. and. Uh, I believe that he improved uh, quite a bit this summer. There's been such an emphasis on defense as a team going into this camp. Are you guys? Do you, do you think you guys are further along defensively than you were at this point last year? And if so, like how big is that difference that you're seeing? I would not compare this year with the previous year. It, well, it's it's a different team, different circumstances, different personnel. We had whole summer to work on, you know, and uh, to for guys to be focused on that. Um, uh, all we're doing is just like laying the foundation down and the, the, how we want to play and how we want to grow uh, and uh, everything we're doing so far, we're on the right track. Obviously, it's a long season, there's going to be ups and downs, uh, which is to be expected, uh, but uh, guys are putting a lot of work in and uh, they're very, very committed to each other, so I'm, I'm hopeful and um, I believe that we're going to have a good, uh, good year. Because your personnel allows you to now with better... Uh, quicker guys, or how do you? We're we're putting much more emphasis on on coaching it and, and teaching it. Uh, so uh, I think that it, that in itself is going to allow us to to to, sh to see growth in that area. And also the, the guys that we have, we do have personnel that that's really guys that are willing to do to crash uh, crash boards and to to do a good job there. I think it is a concern when you do that though that tra transition defense might suffer. How, how do you sort of balance the? Hit the boards and get back. Um, by being strategic, how are we crashing? Uh, what are we doing there? Uh, are we just reckless and going, you know, um, to the to the glass no matter what? And that's not our plan. Our plan is to be to do good job of getting to the rebounding spots on the floor, uh, but at the same time to allow us to do good job in transition defense. Uh, we're trying to marry those two things into into one uh, compact um, uh, part. Okay, so obviously the big news coming out of Montreal and that presser, the R.J. Barrett in, uh, injury, and oddly enough for this training staff, they will have some familiarity with this injury because it's the exact same injury that Jacoby Walter has, but focusing on this Raptors group, there couldn't have been a worse position to get injured. You think about the fact that Bruce Bowen was not in camp and he was supposed to be doing the battle to prep Grady to eventually step into that starting lineup. That 2-3 spot with you know Bruce and R.J., very important for this group. E, I'll start with you. How does this impact 
a very tough opening schedule for the Toronto Raptors team. That's that's the key right there, because as much as the team is saying right now and hoping that it's only two weeks, you know, you have to kind of hope uh, that it is only two and maybe assume it could be longer. And if it extends into three weeks, into four weeks, and now we're a couple weeks into the regular season or longer, I think that is tough because there's no doubt, Akil, you bring up a great point that the front end of this schedule, the first 20, 25 games, is a lot tougher than at least on paper what we see over the last 15 or 20 games or so. And it's kind of the captain obvious statement. But for any team, whether you're at the top, in the middle, or towards the bottom, health is going to be paramount for any club. And with the lack of depth, perhaps, that the Raptors have right now because of the injury bug, I think it's a huge, huge loss for them. I think getting through camp and the rest of the preseason, you're okay because you've had these little mini camps in Spain and Miami and whatnot. So the team, I think chemistry is fine. But in terms of actual wins and losses, when it counts, I think it could be a real, real tough battle. Producer Jake and I were baseline in Montreal when the Jonas Valanciunas screen caught uh, RJ's shoulder, and we saw the pain on his face. Now, we talked about the bad side, Sherman. I want to get, like, it's kind of an opportunity here. Let's talk about Ochai Abaji, a guy who the Raptors have to make a decision on him ahead of the 31st, right, for that fourth year. Um, and there wasn't a lot of minutes around, but how does this present, uh, present opportunity for this Raptors club moving forward? Well, the obvious thing is, as you're saying, RJ's not in the lineup, so then there's more minutes, there's more play calling, there's more defensive assignments, all the things that come with a player as key as RJ not being in the lineup. Uh, for a guy like Ocha, I mean, I thought he did some really good things last season. The question was, could he shoot the ball consistently enough? 39% and I think, from the and, field. And I think that's where he had to really show his, his worth. Because there's no question defensively, yeah, he made some mistakes, but the athleticism is there, the toughness is there, and the desire to play defense is there. So those are good building blocks, but you have to be able to knock down that shot. And And I thought he showed some flashes at times, but not consistent enough. So this will open up some more opportunities. And just to touch on the RJ thing, it's a crucial injury because you think about last season, he jumped on a move and trained. Mm -hmm. Him and at, Emmanuel came in and jumped on a move and trained. At train. the same speed. And now... <laughs> He finally was going to have a chance to get a full training yeah. camp in, to get every all the foundation we talk about being laid in training camp. You know, that that now has been kind of removed based on the situation he's in. And it's unfortunate because not only for him, the core group of these young guys playing together is important. And these are the reps that you get practice and in these exhibition games. So, like Eric said, you know, you hope it's, it's, it's legitimately two weeks and he doesn't miss too much time. But uh, it's a tough one because a full training camp in preseason would have really benefited him and this team in terms of how they're going to operate this season. You know what? I wonder, you know, here I'm playing coach, I guess, to some degree, but you brought up Ochai. I wonder if the Raptors perhaps go with Grady over at the three instead of at the two, and then maybe we see more Davion Mitchell alongside Emmanuel quickly in the backcourt. And then people might say, well, then that, does that affect your point guard rotation? Yeah, it does, but Jamal Shedd has looked pretty good so you far might have three. through camp. So you might have three guys and a guy that can come in and spell off some time and play that shell game of trying to bring guys in and out and have different matchups that way. You'd be a little bit small, obviously, with Mitchell and quickly, but that might be an option for the Raptors and then still allowing you to bring Ochai off the bench in either the 2-3 spot as an energizer and not necessarily in that starting role. So there's, there's still options with this team. Um, but clearly the best option is having R.J. healthy for Game 1. Welcome back inside Raptors Today, and since it is Raptors Today, it's time to spend some time with the face of the franchise, and that's young Scott Barnes. Scotty, you, you guys got a couple new guards in Jamal and in Davion who are known as physical on the ball defenders. I know you haven't been out there with them in a game yet, but even just being around them in practice as somebody that's often in the safety spot or in the back line of the defense, how do you think that's going to help you playing with those guys this year? Uh, those guys, you know, they put a lot of pressure on the ball. Um, so, you know, just going to funnel those those guys that they're guarding, you know, to the rim. Um, you know, when it's hard, you know, to try to get past those, uh, you know, they're just going to bobble up to the rim. And as a weak side defender, you know, it just helps you just get easy blocks uh, if they get past them. Um, but other than that, you know, it just helps our defense overall in general uh, with them guarding the ball, pressuring up full court. Uh, it takes a, you know, it just it, it just helps us our team overall on the defensive end. Uh, so those guys, you know, they come into practice every single day, and you know what to expect out of those guys. And playing with those guys, you just gotta be able to know the personnel that goes along with it. Uh, you know, those guys really attack the ball, so they get over a lot of screens. 
Uh, so different situations, you just got to know how to play. Michael confirmed that you'll be playing on Friday. Uh, how does it feel to be having some game action by the end of the week? And what are you looking to do in that game? Uh, you know, I'm just happy to be playing again. Uh, you know, it's been a really long time uh, since, you know, I got hurt. Uh, so to be able to go play in the actual game, you know, it's just going to be just super fun, super excited for me. Uh, you know, I've been playing with these guys all summer and, you know, just willing to go out there work and build things out there on the floor. So it's a chance to build chemistry and, you know, get to know really the full complement of the Raptors now that all the trades are done and you guys are finally really getting to build some chemistry. Yeah. Like I said, I'm, we've been playing all summer, so we've been building our chemistry all summer. Uh, practicing, just getting to know each other, learning from each other, uh, and, you know, just trying to grow each and every single day. So it's, an, it's another step when we get out there on the floor. Uh, each and every game we play, you know, it's another step. When you play the same team twice, um, obviously you got to approach them differently. Sometimes is there anything on a developmental front between your teammates that you want to see happen this time around? Uh, just consistency. Uh, be consistent every time we step on the floor, you know. We got to redo the same thing that we they did. Uh, what was that? Sunday. Uh, so just redo the same thing. Go out there, dominate ball pressure, uh, create havoc, create turnovers, move the ball really well, run the floor in transition, make sure we cut off the ball, uh, guard the ball really well. You know, do all those things, and you know, just be better at it. Uh, so uh, just having consistency each and every single game. Uh, that's going to be a, a focus. We know you know your friends with Mobo known him for a long time. You guys spent a lot of time playing together this summer. Um, you got to make his debut, obviously, on Sunday. What, what have you made of his game so far and sort of the, the growth that you've seen? Obviously, having known him for a long time. Um, me knowing him for a long time, uh, his shots definitely got better, you know, just being able to see him in practice like each and every single day. Uh, and then those intangibles that he has, long athletic, uh, you know, he be able to guard the ball really well, you know. Just continue to take those steps uh, so he can just become a, an elite defender. I feel like that's where it's all going to start for him uh, on the defensive stance, uh, the defensive presence that he's just going to bring to help our team. And then, you know, everything else is just going to go from there. You know, he has some finishes. You know, he could have read it different, but, you know, it's all just watching film and then just growing from that. Uh, so and, and it's preseason. So it's just a start of seeing where things are. You know, he's just going to get better from that. Is he leaning on you a lot for advice and some of that in terms of how to navigate the league and everything? Uh, no matter if he's leaning on me for advice, you know, I'm always going to talk to him no matter what. Uh, find ways to help him try to get better and tell him things that the team needs and where he should be in certain spots and, you know, what we want out of him. Uh, what I want, what I see on my, when I, while I'm sitting on the bench and I'm watching the game and, you know, throughout practice, seeing those things that, you know, that can help him. I'm just going to tell him no matter what, regardless. Uh, I'm trying to help him out throughout this process, and you know, and he, and he's good at listening. So that's that's a great thing. All right, gentlemen, it's time for you guys to temper or expectations set for Raptors fans as the news came down officially. The next preseason game Friday night will be the first preseason game for Scotty Barnes this year. And again, without camp, without a lot of time to acclimate to whatever's newly been installed, Sherm. What should we expect to see on the floor Friday night from Scotty? Well, I think sometimes expectation can outweigh the moment, and it is preseason, and yeah. you're not expecting him to to be in January form in preseason. So I expect him to to show what you know the stuff we're used to seeing him do. Uh, I'd like to see a shot to see how how much improved his shot is. And with Scotty, it's always you know the flashes are great. But the incremental growth is so important. And we know he can pass the ball. We know he can rebound. We know he can score. We know he can defend. We know he can block shots. All of those things he can do. It's about now putting it together in a consistent way that impacts winning in a more consistent way. And I think, you know, as the preseason rolls on, we're going to see more from Scotty as long as he's healthy and, and able to play. But I, I'm excited to see what he's done with his game throughout the course of this season and understand how much he's improved. Eric, I'm sure I'm talking about the on the court, but much of the conversation this preseason has been about off the court. Mm -hmm. Leadership. You got the bag. You're the guy now. So what do we expect to see from that? Because we saw some great signs on the bench in Montreal with the He was really vocal. Yeah. No, he was really vocal getting up and, and talking to the team and in timeouts and pulling guys aside in the in the brief even time that he was there for the, the day and a half or so through camp itself. 
uh, vocal in practice and, and talking to a lot of guys. Uh, Darko seems quite open to, whether it be Scotty or anybody else as well, stepping in if, and stopping practice if they want or saying something on the bench and listening to the guys. And for what it's worth as well, even just chatting with some of our colleagues, uh, on, you know, whether it be writers or broadcasters or whatnot, I heard a lot of people saying that they noticed a difference in Scotty Barnes in I noticed. scrums at press conference, the way he was speaking, what he was saying, et cetera. So I, I think that's just the natural evolution. And I'll tell you, somebody – I'm trying to remember who it was. I'd give them credit for this, this it was example. Me. It was me. All right, sure, it was you. It was, it was Akil. It's always Akil. <laughs> but the comparison was made to a young DeMar DeRozan who came into the league as a guy that – wasn't by no means was 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 a problem or anything. He was just naturally kind of shy and a little bit reserved and young and grew into his role. And I, you know, at the risk of sounding cheesy about it, it's simply just growing up and maturing. And yeah. when you have to grow up and mature under the spotlight of the NBA and being a star guy in the franchise face, that can be tough sometimes. So I think this is just the na- natural evolution of him, as Sherm talks about as a player, but as you talk about as a person, as a man, as a human, and just maturing into what he is and what he needs to be for this team. Sometimes we forget how old they are. Because if I was put in that position with that kind of money that kind of power at that age you wouldn't see me right now all right basketball fans still talking nba basketball and now we're branching out talking league-wide the annual gm survey ahead of the season came out and there were some notable conversations created by it but before we get into that quickly want to shout out a couple raptors who were made mention of in the survey shouts out to garrett temple second most likely player to become a coach so i think that's a lock behind chris paul i don't want to talk about chris paul but then we got to shout out our guy pat delaney who was given a vote for the best assistant coach in the league so shouts out to our Raptors, now it's time to switch focus, talking about the MVPs of the league. Keeping it Canadian, though, because guess who came in at number one? Is it a surprise, Sherm, to you that Shea has leapfrogged over the likes of Jokic and Embiid, who are the perennials, and even the guy who's thought to be next up, Luka Doncic? No, I think when you look at uh, Shea Gilgis, you think about the fact that his stock is on the rise, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and he's younger than these guys, and, and the fact is, last season... You know, splitting hairs here, he could have been the MVP. So I think that would be where I would put my vote as well in terms of preseason guessing, we'll call it. Yeah. Uh, but Shea is not a surprise to me. And I know there's greatness in Luca and, and Nicola and Joel and all these, Jason, there, there's greatness in these guys. But the the future is so still much ahead of Shea and how much he's going to be able to do. And OKC got better. Yes, they okay, did. Dallas got, got a little better too, though. I mean, yeah. Clay Thompson's really going to shore up the shooting that they did not have last year. He will, but I'm still going with Sherm, okay. and I'm still going with Shea. Okay, I, I think the way he plays, and and to me, and, I, and listen, I don't want to completely kill Luca, but the MVP has to play at least some semblance of the other end of the floor as well. And I don't think Luca is much of a defender. I, Shea, I like what he does on both ends. I like him as a playmaker. I like him as a scorer. And I like the fact that he might even have a little bit more of a burr under him this year based on what happened last year with his team, but then even in the summer. He's coming in even more fired up, even more inspired than he has been with more talent around him. He would have my preseason vote as well if they were asking. It's crazy how we've moved away from the old NBA where the best player on the best team would get the award because we're seeing – Jason Tatum tied for third and was really in the conversation last year, and they're champs. Now, let's switch gears now because it's odd. They're saying that the MVP is Shea Gilgis Alexander, but they kind of rephrase the question. They pose it in a different way, which is who's the player you're going to pick to start a franchise? And all of a sudden, Shea's bumped down for some guy (laughs) from France named Victor. Are we in agreement over this decision, E. Smitty? Uh, you know what? I probably would agree with this just based on how multi-skilled and multi-tooled Wembenyama is. Um, if I was starting a franchise today, would I be able to build around a seven-foot, what the hell is his final number now, five, seven-foot-five guy? It goes to the can, niche every year. Who can rebound, who can block, who can score, who's got good hands, who has decent speed, et cetera. Like, I mean, he kind of does it all, and it's going to be – Fascinating, I think, to see how he evolves this year. With I know you don't like talking about him, but with Chris Paul, it will be a benefit. It's going to be a big time benefit. And then as the years go on, and that team is able to put even more talent around him, that probably would be the guy. The thing that impresses me about him is his usage rate. But sure, it's no, it's a no brainer. Okay, he's seven five or whatever he is, and the skill set is is of a six three. Yeah, yeah, Yeah. he'll shake you. He'll bake you. He's got all of that stuff in his game, and. He's not strong enough yet. He's mm-hmm. going to get stronger. His skills are going to become more refined. And when you put his mind for the game together, and we talked about this before, both ends of the floor, as Eric mentioned, both ends of the floor, this is high, high, high impact. 
The guy's skill set is off the chart. And then we have what I call the constant commodity of youth. Yeah. He's young. Yeah. So this guy's future, of course, if I'm starting to franchise, he is my franchise, period. Yeah. It's weird because Jokic is on that list. And Jokic is kind of long in tooth. I was with guys like Anthony Edwards and a couple other guys to climb up there. But that just shows you how valuable Mr. Jokic really is. Basketball fans up next for your Toronto Raptors. A rehash of the last episode. That's right. It's the Wizards. Sherm, let's talk about it. Sar, much maligned. Expected to be number one overall pick, talked his way out of Atlanta, ended up number two, but we saw flashes in that game. Yeah, we did, and, and you know, we talked about the GM survey in the last segment. Well, best player in five years, he's voted number four, tied for fourth yeah. in terms of this rookie class. So, I mean, obviously there's potential there, there's skill, there's talent, and I think sometimes we jump the gun with these young players when they don't immediately have impact, and they might do some questionable things or say some questionable things, but... There's no question that the kid has talent, and it's my concern is being in a losing situation. How does that impact a young player in terms of their ability to grow as a pro and to understand and value moments in games and understand how to be a winner in a tough situation? That's going to be the question for this young man. It's crazy how everything you just said could be said about the next guy we're going to talk about, but in a different way. We're, 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 we got some synergy going on here because that's about exactly what I was going to say. Talk about Jordan Poole. It's like Sherm teed it up for me. This is the pro. And listen, I got to preface it by saying I've never talked to the guy. I've never interviewed the man. He might be one of the nicest guys in the world. But what I see that he presents himself as too often, in fact, even just the other night in Montreal, when they were down by 24 points or 29 points or whatever the hell it was, and he hits a three and he starts mugging to the Raptor bench and talking junk. At some point, you have to kind of recognize the moments of games, the situations, and just kind of. Keep your mouth shut. He's a guy that likes to talk. He's a guy that likes to kind of show off and, and showboat and whatnot. And I don't know if that's the right personality to the point you just made for a young team that needs more leadership. I think Jonas Valanciunas could be a big impact in that locker room, assuming he's around with them the entire season. I pray for him he's not. Because it's a team without a ton of vets, with a lot of young dudes, with Jordan Poole's still a young guy. And he's supposed to be the one that's going to be a leader to Asar or to the many other young players on this team. I think that could be, again, could be a potential issue for that squad. They need, I think, more of those glue guys. You were talking earlier in the broadcast, in the show, about Scotty Barnes evolving as a leader. That's what Jordan Poole needs to do. All right. Friday night, 7 p.m., TSN. The Toronto Raptors take on Sar Poole and the rest of the Washington Wizards. We'll see you next week. 